Hi there, it's Wanda from Sense By Me Bath and Body Care. And today I'm in my kitchen. Um, it's after Christmas now. We can get back to making good things that we've been waiting to do. So today I thought we would make, I've been wanting to make a muscle um, salve, a rub. Uh, I'm sure like you, you have loved ones or a spouse or a brother or an uncle, whoever in your family or just a friend that has aches and pains. And I have several. I have a husband and I also have my brother. He, they both have had back surgeries and um, they always complain about how their muscles ache all the time. Oh, my back is hurting. My back is hurting. So I thought, okay, we are going to make a muscle salve. And so today, I'm going to go over the ingredients, and um, hopefully we can get this um, going. And uh, we're going to make two separate ones today. I'm going to do two separate batches. One, I'm going to do a quick, um, what they call quick infusion, a warm infusion. The other one... Um, it's going to be kind of the same, but I'm going to let it set longer. Um, it's going to be a cold infusion, and we're going to let it sit for weeks. But So today we're going to get the one going for the um, warm infusion. So let's uh, get started, and um, we'll get, get this going. All right, we're going to make some ginger, cayenne pepper, turmeric, salve. Okay, let me just go over the ingredients that we have. We have our ginger, fresh ginger root, and we're going to be um, scraping that off and grating it. We also have, um, we have fresh dried calendula, which is very great in the, um, has great, great um, benefits as far as uh, in this flower and we have lavender which is very um calming so i thought the little bit of lavender in there would help just give it a little bit better calming effect arnica flower we have arnica we're going to be putting in here um very good for muscle joints aches anti-inflammatory um, you couldn't ask for a better um, flower and herb. So we're going to be putting um, quite a bit of that in the mix. We're going to be using the flower and the stem. As you can see all there. I mean, it's it's got great um, benefits as far as for joints and, and aches. And also, for um, we're going to throw a little bit of the... Um, these are juniper berries, and uh, we're going to throw about a teaspoon in each each mixture that I do, each infusion, um, just to add, give a little added boost to the um, anti-inflammatory for the aches and pains. That I think that will help um, in with the um, calendula to help soften it out, and with the lavender. And I think the juniper berries will actually give that a great, um, a great boost. So we're going to be doing those too. Then we have our turmeric. We'll be using organic turmeric and some cayenne pepper. We're going to do uh, turmeric, and we're going to be using two different oils today. I chose. The one that I'm going to use for the hot infusion, the real quick method that you can that you can do, I'm going to use. Um, you can use any carrier oil that you like. I chose rice bran um, oil. You could use olive oil, coconut oil, mix them together. It's really your preference. Um, and in this, and in the um, four week batch, I'm going to be using my organic sweet almond oil. I really enjoy the sweet almond oil. 
it has great properties of moisturizing and it's great for your skin rice bran is really good too but i just prefer my personal self i like the sweet almond oil to give you that overall absorption into your skin and just it leaves a good feeling soft softness so we want that to be able to absorb in you know in the skin you know once you're putting that salve on that rub you want to be able to rub that in really well and for it to really um saturate and and absorb well so okay so and then you're going to need your mason jars these are quart size um just to give yourself enough room with your um herbs to uh, move around so you can shake them this is for the four week one um so you can shake it every now and then um and you'll need lids and rings for your jars you'll need a grater because we're going to grate the um the ginger we're going to peel it and then we're going to use the crock pot um we've got the crock pot here and we're going to be putting that on low after we get the jar ready and then we're going to put that jar in there and we're just going to let it it's early afternoon here so i'm just going to let it set for rest of the evening and then just let it sit on low in a little bit of water you're going to put water you don't want to fill overfill you just want to give it enough to get that jar warm to keep it warm and keep it moving um you don't want it to boil you just want a nice low heat and let it gradually heat up and infuse all the all the goodness that you have in there so we're that's why we're going to do a quick quick prep for that one and um and then when you're ready you'll be using um to make it into salve when we i'll show you we'll be using some uh, beeswax to harden that um but we'll show you that when we get to there but these are organic um yellow beeswax very good <clears throat> okay let's get this uh ginger now i'm gonna take my spoon you could just take an ordinary spoon and just start scraping We're gonna break a piece off like that. Ginger, ginger's wonderful. It has wonderful warming properties, and um, you can use it for teas, tinctures, bath salts, food. You can put it in your food. Um, I love uh, ginger, ginger and honey lemon tea for when you got a cold coming on. Ginger is great for that. Um, it's good for muscle aches because it's going to warm you. And uh, so right now we're just going to get the skin off. We could, some people do leave the skin on. Um, I'm just going to take some of it off and then we're going to grate it. Excuse my dogs if you can hear them. They're outside on this pretty day. So you just want to just take your spoon and scrape that like that. It comes off very easy. The spoon is the the spoon is the trick. It is the the easiest way without having to um, use a knife and getting all your um losing all your ginger this way you're not you're not losing so much gets in those little crannies in between well we hope everyone had a nice christmas i certainly did with the family and um i was kind of anxious to uh To get done so uh, we could get back to doing what we were what we like to do we like to play and um, we like to play in our kitchens
and we take advantage of all the times when it's nice and quiet. And today, it's nice and quiet. So we're gonna take advantage of it and make this, get this infusion going. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and grate what we need and then I will um, put the rest away. I might make me some ginger lemon tea. Mm, when I get done. That would be awesome. Okay. Okay, we want about a little over a tablespoon to put in each, each one. Because we're going to be doing two at once. So we're going to try and get this going here. Um, well, I do have to cut that little piece off. Doesn't seem like it wants to. There we go. It was being a little stubborn. Okay, let me move this. And we need our bowl. And we need our grater. Okay, you just want to take your grater, put it over your bowl, and just start grating. If you have one of those, I do not, but they do make a ginger grater. It's round and has the little ridges on there where you can just set it there and grate. But we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way and just, just go ahead and grate it. It won't take long at all for no more than what we need. Just hold your bowl steady. Because it doesn't have to be no special size going in the jar because we're infusing it. And we will be straining it later. So it's all going to, we're going to put juice and all. using ginger we will be making um, some elderberry after we get this all infused we're going to be making some elderberry later too so hopefully you'll stay tuned for that video come back and watch how we make some elderberry syrup and gummy bears Woo! we're going to give some of those to some friends because don't you always have someone at work that's always coughing? We have several right now. It is the winter season. So we should share and uh, give them some gummy sweets. Make them build their immune up. Boost them. Okay. We should be just about there. Man, does ginger smell wonderful. Mm. I hope I do have enough left over. Have tea. I think we're good and we'll just clean that little bit up by the way my hands are clean I don't have gloves on we're not doing soap today we're doing muscle rubs we need that okay clean off your grater get all that goodness off. You want all the ginger that you can get. Okay, we'll save these other two pieces for later. Let me just wipe my hands off. 
Okay, we will be using, um, and this is what, this is what your ginger looks like grated. Um, so you want to just, you know, be able to get a good helping tablespoon of that. So that's what that looks like when we get there. So we got at least two tablespoons to put in each you know, one in each jar, because we're doing two different ones. Um, so we'll put that to the side. But right now, we want to get our jars, our jars stuffed with our herbs. So first, we're going to do the, um, you'll need one cup of carrier oil of your choice. And um, then, dry this off. Oh, I'm going to need that tablespoon. Sorry. And then you'll need one, one tablespoon of your grated ginger, ginger root. And then we're going to go ahead and start putting in our, our herbs. And right now we're going to start with the, let's start with the arnica flower. Because we need two tablespoons of each. Let me move my, uh, see if you can see that really well. I'll try to do both. Um, we need two tablespoons. We're going to use the flour and the stems. And they are going to be good heaping um, tablespoons. They don't have to be level. We're not really measuring a whole lot. So... This is going to do great for the aches and pains of uh, when we get this all in here and infused, mixed with the oils. We'll be straining later with a cheesecloth um, once we get it all infused. Okay, I'm going to just do a little bit more on that one. There we go. Okay, we got two tablespoons of each. And then we are going to put um, one tablespoon of calendula. I love calendula. I grow that myself. Um, I make calendula salve. I make calendula soap. I'm learning how to make liquid, liquid soap. That's my next adventure. There's one tablespoon of there, or that. There we go. Now we need, now we need one teaspoon of the lavender, the lavender buds. They're beautiful, they smell heavenly already. Mm. That's to, just to give it a nice little scent, natural scent. We're not adding any essential oils to this batch. We're going to go off of the wonderful benefits of the calendula, the arnica flower, and the lavender and the juniper berries. So we need a teaspoon of um, juniper berries. Whoops, I spilt one. Where'd you go? There you go. And I believe that's all that's in that is the teaspoon of that. There you go. It looks beautiful already. We won't be using those. And then we're going to go ahead. Now we're going to be adding in our, our tablespoon of our big giant tablespoon of ginger. More of the merrier, as I always say. There you go. See? We'll put that right in there. And I just have just a little bit left, so we're just going to go ahead and put that in there for good measure. 
added greatness. Mm. Yes. Alrighty, now we will be adding in, let me find my teaspoon. Um, we will be doing a tablespoon, I'm sorry, of each. So I'll have to wipe my spoon off. I want to make sure I got that right. I almost did a teaspoon. Okay, we're going to do a teaspoon of turmeric in each one. I mean a tablespoon. See, I'm stuck on teaspoon. It is a tablespoon. Take that little safety off. I try to use it as a as much organic as possible and stay as natural as possible. Now, the only thing is with cayenne and turmeric, it does tend to stain, so you have to be careful. It does wash off. Oh my. Taking a little bit more than I should. There we go. All right. And then we need a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. That is very, you know, cayenne is very hot and warming. So with that and the ginger, this rub is going to feel awesome. So you definitely do not put it nowhere near your eyes or in an open wound. You want to make sure you don't have any cuts or anything like that because it will burn. So please remember to not do that if you're making it for someone. Um, but look at all that. That is awesome. All that wonderful mixture. Beautiful, isn't it? And what I like to do before I add my oils, I like to give it a good shake to get it all mixed up. There we go. Oops, sorry. And I spilt the juniper. Um, now it's all nicely coated. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to add, this one is going to be our rice bran. And we want this oil to cover, cover your mixture. Your mixture's here, your oil's got to be at least above it. So at least right there. Because you want to be able for it to soak in and be able to go. You could have used a smaller jar. I'm using a bigger jar. I just like bigger jars to give it more space to shake. So we're going to go ahead, and this is one cup. You can use olive oil, but I used rice bran for this batch. Because that's the one we're going to put in the crock pot. This is going to be our quick heat infusion. And if you do need more oil than the one cup, you can certainly add to it. Take your spatula and scrape all that goodness. Now, you want to release any air pockets. You want to make sure you give it a good dab down in with your, um, get all that down in there. And just scrape your sides to make sure you got all that powder from the cayenne and turmeric. And, uh, because you want all that in there to be well coated with the oil. 
and then I just give it a nice little stir not really a stir but just a good one two three and then you know make sure it's all covered Okay, you see how your oil is above it. Now we're going to take the sweet almond oil and I'm going to cover this one. So we have two different oils and two the same ingredients but with two different carrier oils. One will be sitting for four to six weeks and we will be shaking it um, you know every couple days we'll give it a shake and we'll be keeping it in um, a dark room, dark cabinet um, you'll want to make sure it's covered up. If you don't have a dark area, just put it in a bag. Paper bag will do. Um, and then just give it a shake. Remember to shake. You want to shake those ingredients. Now you can tell the difference. Well, my camera's not the greatest in light, but this is a the rice bran is a darker oil, and the sweet almond oil is a little bit lighter. It is a very lighter oil. So the salve will probably come out a little lighter with the sweet almond oil when we get ready to do that. So um, I'm just giving this a little one, two, three stir, press down, make sure it's all coated. And um, we're going to go ahead and put the lid on this one because we're not going to be doing anything with it except storing it and putting a label and date on it today. So we will be putting this to the side. Okay. And we will put a label on it when we dated it. Today's date. And what it is, muscle rub, sweet almond oil infusion. And then you'll have your ingredients listed. So that's what you're going to do with that. Now, this one, we are going to go ahead and put the crock pot on low. See if I can bring the camera over to show you. There you go. We're going to put it on low. And then we are going to fill, well, we're not going to really fill. We're going to put enough water to put that jar. Let's get the jar. Look how pretty that is. That is beautiful. What a nice salve that's going to make. Okay, we're going to put this. Hope you can see that. It's about, it's not quite um, to the, almost to the, where the oil mixture ends. So it's right below it, just a little. So we're going to put that just like that. And we're going to leave that on low until later this evening. And then we will be taking it out. And uh, we'll come back when it's ready to strain. All right, we'll see you in just a little while.
when we're ready to strain. Okay, the hot salve mix has been sitting in the crock pot now probably about five hours on low. I did turn it off so it could cool down so I could get the jar out, um, but the jar is still warm. And I did every now and then take it out and just give it a good shake. But now we're going to go ahead and get it out. And we're going to put some gloves on because, like I said, this um, mixture of turmeric and cayenne can be a little messy as far as staining. So we're going to go ahead when we get ready to, to put it in the cheesecloth. And we'll take this little, I had that on there to hold the heat in. I got my, my water boiling on the stove because we're going to do a double boiler once we get this strained out and into this jar. Then we'll be adding our um, beeswax to it so we can get those melted in with the mixture so we can make our salve. So right now we're going to dump, take this, we're going to stir it up really good. Let me put this over here. So, And... Um, we're going to scrape all this out and we're going to put it in this cheesecloth and then all we're going to keep is the oil when we're done. This is the quick way if you didn't want it to set, if you didn't want to do the cold method of letting it sit for four to six weeks in a, in a you know dark cabinet, you can do it either way. This is the quick method. We did it. It's been sitting in the crock pot, like I said, like five hours on low. And um, it's been infusing. It still will be a good salve. Um, but your cold method, I tend to like it a lot better. Um, because Just because it has more time to really um, slowly incorporate all the herbs and you know, into the oil. But this will be a nice quick salve that I'm making for my brother, so. And we'll probably give him some of that other when, when it gets ready. So we're just gonna go ahead and hold this over the cheesecloth. And hopefully I won't make a mess. And slowly, and you can see it straining through. Now this does take a little time to do. It's not going to be a zip zip. You know, you got to be have a little patience with it straining and getting it out of the jar. You want to scrape that jar really well. Take your spatula, get in there, get all that oil, and we'll be doing some squeezing, twisting and squeezing to get all that oil out. Okay, we'll put this to the side. Like I said, it does make a little mess. I better grab another uh, paper towel just for emergency. You never know. <laughs> it's best to always have one. Look how pretty red it is. It's like a golden red. Okay, for right now, I'm just going to try to hold this. And press. Let's see if I can hold it like that so you can see. Mm -hmm. 
even smells good. We just want to get the most part of that out before we start picking it up and um, squeezing. Squeezing the cheesecloth. Okay. I think it's workable now. I can work with that. What you do is just take your cheesecloth, pick it right up, try to keep it over your hole of your um, jar, measuring cup, bowl, whatever it is you're using, and just start twisting. See, and it's coming right out, and you're just gonna squeeze. Look at all that goodness coming out. And then you're that way, you're not getting any pieces of the herb, but just the goodness from the herb. And it's holding all the small pieces because you don't want those small pieces in your salve. And you just keep squeezing. And you squeeze till you don't get any more oils. I'm not sure. It's my first time doing it like that. So I got two tins. So we'll see how much it makes. And if there's any left, I may keep a little bit out to put in a roller without any, um, um, beeswax. You can always put it in a roller and use it as a dab, but I think this time I'm just going to hopefully just have enough for the, uh, for the tins. Okay, I think we're good. See, it makes a big mess. See, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and wipe this off. And we're gonna get rid of that. Put it on another paper towel. Now what we can do, I'm gonna take this off so I can show you just the juice or just the um, oil. How pretty is that? Oh, I can't use that. It's got herb in it. But I hope you can see that. That is beautiful. And now what we're going to do, I can take my gloves off too now. Um, we're going to be adding our, our, our beeswax pellet to this so we can infuse it on the stove in a double boiler to melt melt this in with that so we can so we're going to go ahead and add the beeswax now this will take a little time so we'll come back once it's all melted and incorporate it in with the oil and I may need to get a few more tins because that looks like it's going to be quite a bit Okay, and that gives you it gives you one cup of of salve. So we'll be back once this gets um, melted. Okay, our pellets should be almost done. Our beeswax should be almost melted. So we're going to go ahead and get it off the stove. You always want to use a um, mitten, you know, hand thing, glove, 
place it on a towel. Don't put it on your cold counter because it could crack. You always want to lay it on a towel because it is very hot. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get that, bring it over. Here is our mixture. Let's see if you can see that. It's all melted. It's a nice, pretty, um, uh, like a rust color, I would say. And then what we're going to do, I'm just going to hold this so I can, um, so it doesn't go nowhere. We're going to give it a good stir. We want to make sure all the uh, beeswax is melted. And we want to just stir, you know, stir it really good before we pour them into the tins. Now, like I said earlier, we are not adding any, any essential oil or fragrance or any type of anything like that. We are using this all natural herbal oils and, um, we don't need the essential oil. We're going to get all the benefit out of the um, out of the herbs. So we're just going to go ahead and give it a good stir. I got four tins. These are two ounce tins, and um, they make great little salve um, for salve or balm or anything like that. I love those little tins. And I could put a link down below and I could show you where you, where I get mine. I get a good price on them. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and the handle should, the handle's not hot. It's just this part. So, okay. Then we'll bring the camera over and I'll show you what it is in the tin. Gonna give this a little stir. This spills it right to the rim. So Okay, we better not overdo it. Okay, it leaves you just a little smidge and I'll just take that and may use it on hubby later. Put it on his back. See how he can be my so-called guinea pig. That's okay. Um, I'm sure he'll enjoy it. Okay, so we're gonna bring the camera over. We're gonna show you what they look like. And then we'll come back when they're all nice and hard. And um, we're gonna give these away and for trial and uh, test them out and uh, get some feedback. Well, I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll come back when they're nice and uh, they'll pop about an hour, they'll be ready to go. But let me give you a shot of what they look like up close. What a beautiful color. Isn't that a beautiful color? I think this is going to make a wonderful salve. And it's going to have a lot of warming properties. And it it has the um, smell. You can smell the little bit of the lavender in there with the ginger. And um, I just think it's going to be an overall great, great rub. Okay, we'll be back when uh, 
they set up. Okay, it looks like they have all set, and I just wanted to give you a look of what they looked like from when they were in, in when they were hot to now when they are solid. What a beautiful color! Um, we wind up getting four tins and just a little bit left over, which we'll use. So I think we're going to have some wonderful muscle rub made with ginger turmeric, cayenne, a little bit of lavender, some artica flower, and some calendula. What a beautiful blend. We'll be trying them out, and if they do well, you'll be seeing them on the web. So, thanks again for watching. Be blessed, and I hope you'll uh, give this a good thumbs up, share, and like it. Appreciate you watching. Be blessed.